Greetings, I'm Dr. Jeff Schmid with the Environmental Science Department at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. Today I'm going to be talking about the work that we're doing with the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. It's the most endangered species of sea turtle in the world, but it also happens to be one of the most common in our waters here in Southwest Florida. My study site is down in the 10,000 Islands, which is a very important feeding ground for this endangered species. So some of the questions that we ask about turtles inhabiting the area is what are they eating? What types of resources does the turtle need to make its living down in the 10,000 Islands? There are certain habitats that they live in. There are certain food items that are available that they need. And then these are the resources that we in turn have to conserve and to protect to ensure the viability of this endangered species. So part of the research I've been doing over the years has been looking at the diet of Kemp's Ridley sea turtles down in the 10,000 islands. We have to catch the turtles first to see what they're eating. These are free ranging turtles swimming around in the water, not like the turtles, the loggerhead turtles that come up and nest on our beaches. They're swimming around in the waters, the open waters of the 10,000 islands. So we have a specially crafted boat with motor mounted up in midship and a large net that we deploy off the stern. So the turtles are swimming around doing their thing. They have to come up to the surface to breathe because they are air breathing marine animals. So when they come to the surface to breathe, that gives us a chance to pinpoint their location. And then we quickly deploy the net around the turtle in hopes of catching them. We haul the net in, sometimes we catch the turtle, sometimes we don't. It's called turtle fishing, not turtle catching. Once a turtle is captured, we bring it back to the field station on land, and we have large plastic tubs that we fill with seawater. Each turtle is placed in an individual tub, and we hold them for up to 48 hours and wait for them to poop. We collect the fecal material that the turtles leave behind. A few times during the day, we'll check on the animals. If there is some, some poop in the water, we'll scoop it out with a net and place it in a labeled Ziploc bag, an individual identifier for the turtle, and the date it was collected. And then after the turtle gives us a, an adequate sample, or sometimes not, we do other types of uh, data collection. We take measurements, we tag them, then we let them go back where we captured them from. We collect these samples over the season, bring them back and put them in the freezer here in the wet lab at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida. And we archive them over time until the off season when we're able to sort through the samples and see what the animals have been eating. This is a very in-depth look at the diet of these sea turtles that are living down the 10,000 islands. So today I'm going, I'm going to walk through the various steps on once we've collected the sample, how we sort the sample out, the different items that we're looking for, and then the end point, the data that we then use to look at the, the diet, quantify the food items of the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. So here we have a frozen sample from a, a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. This is their frozen poop sample, their fecal sample. And what we're gonna do is we're going to run it through two different sized sieves. We have the first sieve, you can see it's a, a very large grate on it. This collects the larger items. And then we have a smaller sieve that has a much finer grate on it or screen. And so what we do is we pour the sample through and the items that remain on the larger sieve are the ones that we sort through. Anything passing through in the smaller sieve is unidentified. We still count that, we just call it unidentified material. So we take our sample that's been thawed and we pour it in like this. Okay, once the sample has been rinsed through um, the sieves, this is what we have left with the larger grate sieve. This one is rather interesting because it's pretty much one particular food item. These are 
sandy skin tunicates or sea squirts. And these live individually. Each one of these is an individual animal, a sandy skin tunicate. And this is the outer leathery part of, of the sea squirt, the tunic of the tunicate. That's where they get their name from, this leathery outer part. Some tunicates are colonial. They live in groups. This particular one is solitary. Now, if you look at the information for Kemp's Ridley sea turtle diet, you'll probably see that they are crab eaters. Most of the studies that have been done have found Kemp's Ridleys eat mostly crabs. One of the interesting finds from our work in the 10,000 Islands was that Kemp's Ridleys were eating things other than crabs. In this case, they are eating sandy skin tunicates, these sea squirts. And you can see from this sample, this turtle was eating them like popcorn. It's pretty um, apparent what this animal was doing. He was just going along the bottom, grazing on these tunicates, these sea squirts that are attached to sediment. So this was an, an interesting find. Some of our other work, one year we found they were eating sponges. That had never been documented as a food item for Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. So one of our interesting findings is sea turtles have a variety of things that they feed upon depending on the conditions, the environmental conditions that they're living under. Certain times after a storm, a hurricane, some items might not be available, other items are, so they switch their diet. They're adapting to the different groceries that are available on the shelf. Okay, so we've rinsed through our sample. The next step is sorting through the different items. And this sample, as I said, is pretty easy. It's just one item. This turtle was just eating tunicates or sea squirts. So what we'll do is we'll take each one out and count it. We count the number of tunicates that this turtle will eat. And then we put the different types of food items into their own dish. Because what we're gonna do later is we're gonna weigh these and we get a weight of the food items. And that's actually the quantity, the numbers that will crunch in our analysis. So it's sorting all the items out individually into their own little aluminum dish and then putting them in a oven to dry. So that last sample was, like I said, pretty easy. The animal just ate one thing, tunicates. I've got before me a, a different sample and this animal had a little, this turtle had a little more variety in its diet. It did eat tunicates, about a dozen or so, not like the last animal that filled up on them but it had some other items as well. Here we have some stone crab, and we can tell by the fragment of the pincher. It's a big stone crab claw, and their shells are really thick, really heavy shells on them. And then we also have spider crab pieces, and you can kind of see from the, from the layout here what this animal ate the most of. We have three separate tins or aluminum dishes of spider crab. So it was eat eating mostly spider crab. It also ate a little bit of stone crab, some tunicates. This is the leftover that passed through the large sieve. And then we have a couple other little minor items there as well. So this turtle had more variety to its diet including the, the crabs that we typically think of when we're talking about Kemp's Ridley sea turtle diet. So an important part of the process is keeping our data all together. So we have a data sheet that we use for recording each turtle and then the items that we have in the dishes, the various food items that constitutes a turtle's diet. And then what we'll do is we take these tins, we'll put each one in the incubator, we'll cook them overnight. It's not really cooking, it's not a high temperature, it's, it's a rather low temperature, but it dries them out. And then we'll take a dry weight from each of the tins, the aluminum dishes, and we'll record that on our data sheet. And then this is the number that we use when we're doing our diet analyses. 
So we're in the final stage of our study of the Kemp's Ridley turtle diet. So we take our sorted poop sample, we've put it in the incubator, we cooked it overnight, and now the samples are dry. So now we wanna get a dry weight of each one of those components. And then that's the numbers that we then use when we're, we're crunching to try to enumerate or quantify the diet of Kemp's Ridley sea turtles. So we take each one of the samples and we've got a scale, a digital scale, and we'll get a weight from each one. We've got our spider crab. We put it on there, record the weight on the data sheet for the spider crab. And we take our next sample. Here's a glob of tunicates. These are each of the sea squirts that have now been dried. Put the tin there, and we get our measurement for our sea squirts. So we've, we've collected all the diet data, we've crunched our numbers, we have some idea of, of what Kemp's Ridley sea turtles are eating, what they need in the 10,000 islands. But Kemp's Ridley sea turtles are distributed throughout the U.S. coastline into Mexico. So this is just a piece of the bigger puzzle. All those pieces are put together by the various researchers who, who do similar types of studies and these are used in developing conservation plans or management plans. One of the things when a species is listed as threatened or endangered, you have to develop a recovery plan. So each one of these puzzle pieces is then used to make a recovery plan identifying the items that we need to protect and conserve for that particular species. So that's been all the fun that you can have with turtle poop, uh, sort of a day in the life of, of a conservancy researcher. So hopefully you can take this type of information and apply it up to other things that you do during the day or other parts of, of your camp experience and bring it into a larger conservation mindset that is the mission of our organization.